Welcome back to the Pop Culture Discussion. I am your host, Robert, and I just platinumed Marvel Spider-Man 2. To say I was excited for Spider-Man 2 is a literal understatement, as not only was this one of my most anticipated releases for this year, but Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time, and even at this age, I still have a slight obsession with him. Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales are also two of my favorite games of all time. So Spider-Man 2 had some massive shoes to fill in trying to top those games. So is this an improvement over two of the greatest superhero games of all time? Yes, it absolutely is. But is it perfect? Well, I still got some nitpicks for this one. So let's get stuck right into the review. The perfect mix of character storytelling presents an epic tale for both Peter Parker and Miles Morales as Spider-Man, facing their darkest hour yet in this emotional, intense, and shocking new story. Without spoiling anything plot-wise, this feels like two different games combined into one. Act 1 and Act 2 feel like a direct sequel to the previous Spider-Man games, as where Act 3 just went full web of shadows on us. If you've played that Spider-Man game, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and if you haven't, I won't get into it because of spoilers. It honestly feels like Insomniac were pitched two different big baddies in Kraven and Venom, and they couldn't decide which one to pick, so they just picked both. And as satisfyingly epic as the transition from Act 2 to Act 3 was, Act 3 is so bombastic and insane that it felt like, why are no other superheroes getting called to help? The stakes are escalated so high it felt like an Avengers level threat. The stunning graphics craft cinematic cutscenes with huge scale destructive levels and beautiful landscapes, presenting an impressively expansive and exciting open world. When it comes to open world video games, I can easily say Spider-Man 2 is one of the absolute best when it comes to pure presentation and impressiveness. These are some of the most stunning graphics I've ever encountered, especially considering the incredible speeds you're moving at and not a single frame rate is dropping. And not a single loading screen in sight. Every other PS5 game needs to learn from this. The interactive cutscenes are so cinematic, it's so easy to get caught up in them just enjoying what's happening on screen. And then when a quick time event pops up, they constantly take you by surprise. Not only is everything scaled up and enhanced from the previous games, but almost every main mission is way more destructive than I was expecting. Almost no set piece is left the same way from the start of the mission until the end. And it's just purely spectacular to witness. The fantastic main performances shine with compelling writing, escalating stakes and emotional character arcs, building a bombastic story full of love and respect for the source material. Peter, Miles, Craven, and Venom are honestly the big standouts for me and they absolutely stole every scene they were in. The heartfelt and wholesome character moments with quippy humour mix the tone well with the darker themes crafting an unpredictable and exciting story. There are some of the most wholesome moments I've ever seen on screen in Spider-Man 2, especially when it comes to the side missions and just seeing how Spider-Man has positively affected the lives of his fellow New Yorkers. As crazy and insane as the main story is, taking some time to stop and chat to a citizen in distress and hearing a piece of their story made me so immersed in this world and just took me on the best roller coaster ride of emotions when combined with the intense stress of the main story. The fast, fluent, and satisfyingly addictive traversal with the hard-hitting and creatively strategic combat craft some of the best superhero gameplay in recent years. I honestly cannot stress this enough. Spider-Man 2 has the best traversal I have ever experienced in a video game. If you love getting from A to B in video games, just buy this game for the traversal alone. Slingshotting off a building and immediately activating your wingsuit to get some crazy air and speed, gliding through a wind tunnel and webbing onto a building to get some air and doing it all over again until you land on your destination, just never gets old. I didn't even touch the fast travel until after completing the main story and the side missions when I was just hunting for my last few trophies towards the Platinum. The combat has also had a shakeup, with half your gadgets from the previous games being swapped out for these hard-hitting special abilities that look super fancy and pack a punch. Personally, I found Spider-Man's regular combos didn't quite hit as hard 
as I liked until about halfway through the game when I had leveled up a heap and felt like a true superhero. Stealth wise, it's very similar to the previous games. Although webbing towards unsuspecting enemies feet first never gets old, I did find these enemies a lot smarter in this game. So it didn't really leave all that much room for stealth takedowns. So I usually just ended up facing everyone head on. The intimidatingly challenging enemies and hugely epic boss fights with fan favorites craft enhanced scale missions of intense draw dropping superhero action. These enemies are not only smarter and more aggressive than ever, but they all come in different types with different weapons needing multiple ways to bring them down. Gone are the days of spamming the attack, dodge and gadget buttons of the first Spider-Man game as an all new parry system and abilities are now needed with a more strategic timing to take down your foes. Bosses are especially essential to this type of gameplay with perfect parries saving your life when your health is down. The bosses not only have multiple health bars and stages of the fights, but the stages get harder as the bosses get more aggressive. These fights are so much fun and super epic, but they are also pretty stressful considering the amount of damage the bosses do to you even on the easier difficulties. The customizable suits, banging soundtrack, adaptive accessibility options and multiple characters to play as are exciting highlights as well. With the amount of suits on display here, it couldn't have been any better. Not only are we getting all our favorite Spidey suits from the games, movies and comics, but we are getting multiple colors and variations on them. I don't know if it's just my OCD, or if I just love matching aesthetics, but matching Peter and Miles in similar colored suits and then having them team up made their scenes together just that much more satisfying for me. Now I know I've mentioned the increase of difficulty this game has over the previous ones, but I will mention as well, there are some incredible helping hand settings you can activate in the options menus for the gameplay. Activating slow-me as a shortcut button was absolutely one of my favorites for when things were getting way too hectic and I just needed a moment to think and strategize without completely pausing the game. And I just thought I'd mention before going into my nitpicks, I know everyone hated the MJ missions in the first Spider-Man and yes, they are still here, but they're actually really fun this time. As a matter of fact, every single character you play as in this game is fantastic all for their own reasons. I'm not gonna go into the others because of spoilers, but just so you know, no matter who you're playing as, you're in for a fun time. Okay, now it's time for my quick little nitpicks. I'm just gonna rattle these off really quickly without really getting into them because they were more of an inconvenience than anything that really ruined my experience. Number one. The removal of being able to replay missions or even reactivate villain bases after completing the game. They had this in the previous game, so why isn't it here? Plus, it makes any combat trophies you haven't gotten after the main story a real pain to get afterwards. Number two, the removal of the weather controls. Again, this was in the first game and it's not here. We want to be able to play as Black Spider-Man at nighttime after finishing the game. Cause it'd be awesome, but we can't do that. Number three, the smaller list of gadgets. I know, we get some cool special abilities here, but I would absolutely be lying if I said I didn't miss the gadgets from the first game. Number four, the higher difficulty. I know I've mentioned this a couple of times already, but these enemies are so aggressive and they hit way harder, not to mention every single boss in this game. New players of Spider-Man or any kids playing this game, good luck with it. Because unless you are playing it on literally the easiest difficulty, prepare to get beaten and knocked out a few times. Number five, Mysterio is the new screwball. Why? Honestly, the rage quit is real getting the gold on these challenges. I did it, but at what cost? Number six, why is the open world so in your face about how woke it is? I'm just gonna leave it at that because I don't wanna get into it. Luckily, it doesn't affect the main story at all, but when I notice a game is woke, it's clearly trying way too hard. Number seven, there is literally nothing to do after you finish the main story, not only is there no new game plus, which I would absolutely play, so hopefully they add it later, but like I said earlier, you can't reactivate any of the missions. So that's super annoying because sometimes you just wanna fight some enemies after you finish the game. All you can do are those random little crimes that pop up and that's literally it. In saying all those little nitpicks, I still absolutely loved this entire game from start to finish. 
It took me 36 hours to Platinum Spider-Man 2, and I can honestly say that is a perfect length for me. I'm at a point in my life right now where I don't have 100 hours to put into a video game, so anything under 50 hours just absolutely hits the spot for me. Insomniac out did themselves with this absolutely incredible PS5 masterpiece, and for that I have to give it a 10 out of 10. Despite its little list of flaws, this is easily the best and most enhanced Spider-Man video game to date, and a peak PS5 experience that truly shows the strengths of the console. All PS5 owners need this game in your collection, because you will absolutely find something here to love. Thank you so much for watching my Spider-Man 2 review. And if you liked what you saw and you want to see more Spider-Man, feel free to click that subscribe button as more Spider-Man videos are in the work as I speak. So stay tuned for those and I will see you all in my next video.